I beat Shadow the Archery, which means it's time for a tier list. Based on my personal experience and how many deaths a boss took me. Ever since I was a wee lad, I really liked the concept of dual wielding daggers. I don't know why, it just tickles some part of my brain. Of course, you know we're going to be using Reduvia Bloodblade and the Scorpion Stinger. No, I did not use the weapon art because it's ranged and it's basically magic, and I just don't like using magic in these kind of games. I stuck with the tried and true left click, right click, and yes, I use mouse and keyboard like a sociopath. I'm also going to be ranking them in the order in which I fought them. Maybe that matters to you, maybe it would be a completely different experience if I fought a certain boss earlier or later. I will not be ranking, however, copies of the same boss. We're talking Ghost Flame Dragon or the Great Red Bear where there's multiple of them. Bosses that somehow made it from the base game into the DLC, they have no right being here. And random mobs that become bosses as well. And the one person that I ended up not finding, Dry Leaf Dane. So enough yapping, let's do this. Starting off the list, Black Jail Knight. This guy actually took me about 14 deaths. I have all the stats here on a spreadsheet. He goes into the C tier. Might be wondering, how did this son of a gun take 14 deaths off you? Daggers aren't gonna be staggering these guys. About six to seven deaths in, I switched to Morgoth's sword and got him down to a sliver of HP. Proved that I could have one-tapped him with a weapon that staggers him to death, but I decided I am the Dagger Man, so we switched back to the Reduvia and the Scorpion Singer. It was just a slugfest. I did so little damage. I got punished like a son of a gun. It was our first boss of the DLC, Copium, but it is what it is. The next boss we fought was the Ghost Flame Dragon. I was actually really excited for like a beaver boss, like an undead beaver, because it was was like in a swampy dam area and his bones looked like driftwood to me so i was so excited for like a really interesting beaver but it was just a dragon they did change up the boss pattern a little bit at the end of the day a dragon fight this guy took about four deaths from me so he goes into d tier the final fight took six minutes to finally drain him to zero next up the divine beast i actually struggled here he took 19 deaths from me so he almost clears c tier above the black jail knight <laughs> This guy was super frustrating. I was lagging a lot. Copium, it's hard to tell what he's doing. He's supposed to be deceptive. Yeah, we got there eventually, sub 20. I was shocked when going through the replay, this was the next boss that I fought, Rolana. At first, I actually started with one scatter tree fragment. About 10 attempts in, I realized what the scatter tree fragments did, and I got to plus three scatter tree. So I fought Rolana with plus three scatter tree. That went as well as you'd expect, dagger dagger. It took us 111 deaths until we beat Rolana. That is an easy S tier. Uh, this fight I loved. It was literally a song of ice and fire, a dance. And despite being a long, gruesome bout, I enjoy learning the steps required to do that tango. I choked three times against Rolana. I could have ended the suffering at, at about 87 deaths, but I just had massive blunders, no clutch bone in my body apparently. And she took us three hours and 50 minutes. Black Knight Edred. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, this archetype is close to the Crucible Knights, but they're different enough to be considered a unique boss. This guy took us two deaths. Two deaths brings us to the bottom of D tier. Maybe this was an easy boss for some people. Ralva the Great Red Bear. It was a big boss, but it was fast. I know it has some of the Beast Clergyman's attacks, and with my graphics, with my settings, it was really dark, and the bear was also dark. So it was hard to see what was going on. That being said, took nine deaths from us. Top of D tier. Now that I beat the game, I was watching other streamers, and they definitely fought the putrescent knight later on in the run, but we fought him pretty quickly. And I will say, I thought it was a fun fight. And we cooked. The putrescent knight took 11 deaths off us, so that puts him at the bottom of C tier. Dance of Rana. We just one-tapped her. It was easy money. Even our measly little daggers could stagger her. She just got chopped up, chopped up and staggered to death. Even when she roll spammed, we just caught her out of it and it was over. I knew her pain all too well as someone who gets staggered to death as a dagger dagger user. Really unfortunate. Golden Hippopotamus. In my mind, the Golden Hippopotamus was a little bit more of a frustrating fight, but looking at the replays, he only took two deaths off of us, which puts him in D tier. The question is, is he below or above Black Knight Edred? Black Knight Edred took us about two minutes. The Golden Hippopotamus, we actually cleaned up in about a minute 40. So he goes even below Black Knight Edred. Mesmer the Impaler is already up on the list. I didn't think the Shadow Keep was gonna have Mesmer. I didn't watch a lot of the trailers. I don't like to get too hyped for a game. So I didn't know Mesmer was here and I was shook. I had a really good day the day I fought Mesmer and the Putrescent Knight because Mesmer only took eight deaths off of me. Mesmer is in D tier, just below Ralva. That's crazy. Feel free to go watch the VODs. 
twitch.tv slash bow the bub. But I looked it back. We cooked on Mesmer. I don't know what to say. Ralva, that's crazy. This list is crazy. The fact that Ralva is above Mesmer for me. Also, I've heard people struggle with this guy. Mesmer, I was stuck on for a total of 26 minutes. Eight deaths. The Black Knight, the undead with the twin axes. Lightning mode, very cool. I only died once to this dude. So he actually goes beneath Golden Hippopotamus. Bottom of D tier. I was actually getting very fed up. I got to the Rao ruins, couldn't find the map, got lost as heck, got so mad, and I was like, F it, let me just fight a boss. I explored for like five hours to find a whole lot of nothing, and I was like, let me just go into this boss room. And we ran into Ramana. I like this boss a ton. Um, pretty simple though. Ramana took six deaths from us. She goes into the D tier, just below Mesmer, and above the Ghost Flame Dragon, the Red Bear. This is another NPC boss that we just staggered to death that just got absolutely blasted. The Red Bear took a slightly longer, 15 seconds longer than the Dancer Rana though. So this guy goes top of F. Based on the previous day, I was not having fun. At first, the exploration was S tier. I was going through every nook and cranny. As I explored more and more and more, and I couldn't uncover new things, I got very frustrated. Did a bunch of exploring off stream, and somehow I found the Scudder Tree Avatar. So the next time on stream, I was like, F it, let's fight this guy. This guy took 11 deaths from us. The same as the Putrescent Knight. But based on the winning run, the Putrescent Knight took us about 4 minutes before the Scudder Tree Avatar took us about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So the edge goes to the Scudder Tree Avatar, C tier. Below the Black Jail Knight, that's wild. That is wild that... He is where he is. We found the Scudder Tree Avatar and Commander Gaius at about the same time. I decided to fight Commander Gaius next. Believe it or not, we cooked. Only took us four deaths. The same amount as the Ghost Flame Dragon. Took us six minutes to defeat because it was such a long slugfest. Commander Gaius, three minutes, 30 seconds. Commander Gaius, for me, was easier than the god dang Ghost Flame Dragon. Easier than Ramana. Easier than Ralva. Is it the Black Jail Knight? That's wild. I'm pretty sure I got excellent RNG and he did the most basic moves for the last 30 seconds and I just wiped him. I acknowledge there was a lot of luck here in this run, but it is what it is. That was my experience. I don't know how to say this name next. Metir, the mother of fingers, the mother of dragons. And now that I'm watching other streamers fight this thing and challenge runs and speed runs, I got so lucky. She didn't use half her devastating moves on me. And yeah, I'm like Scudder Tree 15 at this point. But yeah, she only took one death from us. So that puts her in the same tier as the Death Knight. They both took about two minutes. But ain't no way I'm going to give the edge to the Death Knight. We're giving Mother of Fingers the spot above Death Knight. Dude, this list looks wild. Based on death and time, the Mother of Fingers is below all these sons of guns. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the most objective way on a first playthrough. Count Ymir is an easy F tier. This guy also got blasted by our daggers, staggered to death, and it was so fast. 30 seconds, even faster than the Dance of Rana. He got staggered to death, he bled to death, was a fraud. The Lamenter. The Lamenter also took me one death, also about two minutes. I like this boss, different, little gimmicky, uh, but we definitely put it below the Death Knight, the most bottom of D you could possibly go. Demi-Human Swordmaster Ons, Onze. I don't know how to say this. I don't know if I have any footage of this guy because I explored offline, found him, fought him. Obviously a little Yoda reference, really cool boss. Uh, unfortunately, despite his speed, uh, because of his size, he just also gets staggered to death. I believe I one tapped him, so uh, he's going to top of F because he has all those movement moves. He has the backflips. He has the like a starburst stream. So he definitely took me the longest. Ancient Dragon Man, another boss that I fought off stream during my exploration tirade. As much as I like Demi Human Ons more, Ancient Dragon Man didn't nearly get as staggered as much as these guys. He also had some scary moves that did chunked us way more than any of these dudes. So. It, even like stakes wise, it was scarier. Once again, I'm not gonna be ranking these guys, the Jagged Peak Drake, the second one, and Senesax, because they're just reskins. It's really basic dragons from the base game and just brought to the main game. So we're going straight to Bale. I probably shouldn't put this guy on the list, but I summoned for him. For any other boss, I did not summon. Uh, first off, 
Copium, Igon. What a cool lore reason. I could have summoned him, got all his dialogue, died on purpose, and then finished the run. But as cool as Bale was, I was so sick of dragons. After Jagged Peak Drake, second one, Senesax. And then Bale kept doing this cycle with me. He kept doing Talon Attack, breathe fire into his crotch. Talon Attack, breathe fire into his crotch. And I was like, is this really gonna be the gameplay loop? And then obviously you get to phase two. And it's so crazy and epic and exciting. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. And then after his wings go away, he went back into the talent attack, breathe flame into his crotch cycle. And I was like, I I'm not gonna die to this guy on purpose and do this fight over again. I'm just gonna kill him with Igon's help. He only actually has one death on us. The fight took five minutes, which is why I didn't want to redo it. I actually puts him below the golden hippo, but above Matir. That's crazy. That's crazy. Bale's below the golden hippo. Bales below these guys. Once again, it definitely would have taken me more attempts if I didn't summon because Igon easily does 20 to 30%. I'm pretty sure he caused a stagger with his roar head. I know a lot of people are going to say this is an L take. The fight wasn't exciting. <laughs> I was sick of dragons. That's all I got to say. Rakshasa. Once again, someone who doesn't get staggered, he would be up there on my fifth attempt. I switched from dagger dagger to Morgoth's great sword and then I one tapped him. I was frustrated with the game at this point. I was really tired at one minute. So he is under Commander Gaius. Jory, you gotta have your classic summoning jutsu boss. Thank God I one tap this guy. I'm gonna put him at the top of F because it was two minutes and that's a long time for these NPC fights. All I did was I rushed him down, healed through everything and just cut him to shreds. Another really cool boss I heard people rave about. I heard people might have struggled with. This is one of the later bosses we were fighting. Midra, design-wise, one of the coolest DLC bosses. He took two deaths off of us at two minutes. So he actually goes above Black Knight Edred and below Rakshasa, that's wild. And last but not least, promised consort Radon. So this is what happened. After the Ramana fight, 12 bosses ago, we fought Ramana. We burned the Scatter Tree Shadow Tree. We went on up the stairs. Because I was at this point like 25 hours into the game, I was like, ain't no way this is the final boss, right? And then I was in Small Ant's chat and someone in Small Ant's chat was like, final boss is Radon, lol. And I'm like, why do these people exist? I was like, this guy could just be trolling, but you get the lore. Ansbach tells you straight up that they're trying to res Radon with the corpse of Moog. So at that point, about like 10, 15 hours into the game, I was like, oh, I know who the final boss is. It makes sense. But then after doing all this exploring, it was time to face the big man. Without further ado, we haven't had a boss go above C tier since Rolana. In fact, most of these bosses have been going into D tier. What if I told you Radon was in D tier? Well, that'd be very unrealistic. What if I told you he was top of C? You're right, I'd be lying. Enough dilly dally. Of course, Radon was an easy S tier above Rolana at 127 deaths and even longer at about four hours. Promise Concert Radon, the hardest boss in the game. I think a lot of people think he's the hardest boss for a couple reasons. I see the complaint time and time again. Hair, 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 I can't see what's going on. And also the light particles. So light and hair. My biggest problem with Radon was the lag. <laughs> I understand this is a me diff. In this fight, in the Rolana fight, and the Divine Beast fight. In the fights that I struggled with the most, I lagged. Call it Copium. I honestly don't think the hair was a big deal. I noticed off rip, like most from software fashion, he had the same moveset, just added combos. And the biggest thing was that the light after attacks staggered. That was my gripe with the final boss. My Sharingan activated. I saw past the hair. I saw past the light particles. I also turned my settings down to like mitigate with the lag as, po as much as possible. So that's probably what helped. But my biggest thing was that I staggered it every other attack because of the light. It was learning his punish windows that were already tight that got even tighter because of the light, because of the stagger. That's about it. This list looks crazy. This is invalid. I'm completely fine invalidating Bale the Dread. But even then, Mesmer below Ralva is insane. Midra, Ramana, Gaius, all beneath Ralva is crazy. So I want to do a list that is slightly scaled, the grading curve, if you will. This is the revised list. Of course, at the top still being Radon and Rolana, and at the bottom being Jory, but this is a more balanced list. 
It still looks crazy, but it separates the bosses for a better visual of how I struggled. We never had any bosses that gave us 20 more deaths, let alone 50 more, aside from the two that were 100 plus. So we got rid of those categories and then we just separated them a little bit more. I can't believe Ralva was harder for me than Ramana and Mesmer and then all these guys. Depending on how you're feeling that day, depending on when you run into the boss, that could be curtains. Like, I truly believe Ralva has no right being here. But based on my mood and my attitude and just how tired I was when I fought Ralva, Ralva took so many deaths off of me. And the Black Jail Knight. Oh my god, Black Jail Knight is my fourth hardest boss. Holy! <laughs> That's probably the biggest upset. These two, Black Jail Knight and Ralva. All right, let me know what you think of the list. Thank you for watching, much love. Subscribe if you liked what you saw. As always, long live the Brotherhood.